朋友咧嚟參與我哋。Thank you for coming to this meeting. This is a public hearing on the review of Hong Kong's poverty situation and setting of a target for poverty elimination. We have three sessions. This is session number three. We have more than 150 deputations attending today's meeting. We'll start session three now. May I remind uh, the deputations that uh, your speeches are not covered and protected by CAP 382, uh, uh, electrical powers and privileges uh, ordinance. That is to say, you, you will be, you have to be responsible for what you say personally. Before we start, perhaps uh, let's see if the bureau has got anything to supplement. Before I invite the deputations to speak, Secretary, or perhaps I wish you give more time for the deputations to speak. Every deputation or individual will be given three minutes. Uh, the first one to speak is Mr. Miss Lam Choi Mui. I have three kids: one uh, P two, one uh, P six, another K three. I have to spend quite a lot of money on their education. Well, school uniforms cost you a lot. Uh, for example, the belt uh, would cost you twenty odd dollars, and a school uniform twenty uh, dollars. And we need two two uniforms and uh, two uh, sports uniforms for each kid, and also for two two winter uniforms, jackets, uh, sports shoes. The whole set would cost me some four thousand dollars. It's a big sum for a grassroots family. I I once purchased only one uniform, but uh, when the uniform was washed and uh, it was not dry in good time, uh, it's not available for use the next day. And sometimes uh, they have to use uh, old uniforms, uh, which are too large for their size, and uh, they have nothing for the extracurricular activities. We have to apply for uh, s subsidies. If we are successful, they will get some activities. If not, they don't get anything. There are many uh, restrictive uh, conditions. For example, two to three thousand dollars will be granted. You have to use it in uh, two to three months. And the textbook grant and CSSA do not really cover school uniforms and extracurricular activities. And for quite some time, uh, the administration has not reviewed the uh, the subsidies, uh, the scope of subsidies. So as to better help uh, grassroots uh, families. Thank you. I think many deputations will be telling us their own stories. I am grateful for that. Would like to hear from you the real life uh, experience. So next one, we have Mr. Zhang Jingqiu. Thank you, Chairman. The Poverty Commission published a report in um, 2017. Many people were surprised to find that uh, the uh, policies on, uh, notwithstanding the po poverty alleviation, alleviation, we have seen an increase of 0.3 percent, or 5,300 children in poverty. And after intervention, uh, by mean by that I mean uh, after the Considering public housing, there are still a lot of people in poverty, and you are very use a very strict uh, criterion. Fifty percent of medium income is the poverty line. I believe uh, that means uh, poverty is underestimated. According to the administration, there are a number of measures uh, helping children, such as uh, subsidies and allowances for the. Um, school children and for working people, there is also a. a an allowance. It said that the government don't un doesn't understand the needs of grassroots children, or do they think that uh, the uh, current level of support is sufficient for children in grassroots families? 
the CE published a rep uh, the policy address, uh, and the FS has also announced its budget. There's only one short-term uh, policy to give a, a subsidy to children, uh, $2,500. Uh, does the government think that this will be sufficient to alleviate the short-term difficulties that they face? Uh, Dr. Law, and now we have uh, the Under Secretary, Mr. Choi, here. You have heard from uh, par many parents and the carers what they need. Oh, they, they may be talking about sundry expenses, but they're taken together, they're, that represents a big uh, sum for many families. For example, use of internet for learning, the extracurricular activities, uh, school uniforms, and uh, lunch. And uh, there are problems with uh, their dietary the intake and nutrition requirements. Uh, there are many issues that they need to address, and they need help from gov the government. Has the government looked into this uh, need differently in formulating the poverty alleviation policy? Although we don't have anyone from the Education Bureau, if we look at the uh, textbook grant for the primary and secondary school children, well, things are lacking behind. For example, lunch allow, uh, allowance. So it's uh, done in a very uh, unsatisfactory manner. manner. No, secondary students don't get any subsidy for lunch. Uh, though for those of our CSSA uh, and in primary schools, they get $30. So the, the, that, that, that's insufficient to meet the full expense. They have to pay, uh, for example, $100 additionally per month on lunch. The government should come up with uh, concrete indicators on the question of uh, poverty alleviation. We'd like to get a response from uh, the Bureau concerning the uh, the different kinds of uh, grants and subsidies. Mr. Chung, Ms. Chung, can you? We, in our service uh, delivery, we have uh, contacted many children, many families. I want to talk about, in particular, medical uh, expenses and, uh, in particular, dental service of, uh, for children. Uh, according to the uh, Department of Health, uh, they have conducted some survey. They have looked at kindergarten uh, children. Fifty percent of them have a uh, tooth decay, at least uh, two teeth uh, uh, on average. Two teeth, uh, tooth, uh, tooth decay. But uh, for they don't have anything for preschool children. Those under age of six. No subsidy is provided. Why do we have to take this up today? We've got some figures and also some the feedback from uh, grassroots uh, families. Th their, their chances uh, of uh, having the tooth dental problems uh, in these families are, are higher. You may say that uh, they should uh, go to a public clinic for this. But at present, public dental service uh, is uh, only for pain relief and extraction of of teeth. If they we want to do something preventive, well, nothing is provided. So children from these uh, disadvantaged families will have to go to private uh, dental uh, clinics or smaller. Uh, non-profit uh, dental clinic for the service they need. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the fees uh, may not be affordable to them. We want to make three suggestions. First, the Department of Health can uh, ex extend its uh, outpatient service to cover not just uh, pain, uh, relief, and uh, feeling. If uh, feelings uh, are done at the age of six, uh, very often they will have to do it again uh, when they grow up. So more the treatment should be offered in uh, government clinics so that uh, their problem can be uh, addressed as sourced w without adding the financial burden to, to, of these families. And also under the CCF, uh, there should be dental service voucher to grass children for children 
uh, in particular for children under the age of six, so that they can get the dental examination, uh, so that they don't have to wait until there's a need to treat the uh, uh, tooth decay or to receive canal root uh, treatment. And there should be comprehensive dental uh, check service, just like the student health uh, medical checks. And uh, you know the health is very much related to how well they can study. The government should pay more attention to the, uh, the dental problems or to dental service. For children and and the pain and suffering should be addressed. In September 2013, the Commission on Poverty announced the first poverty line. The setting of the poverty line, according to the government, uh, aims at uh, monitoring the uh, poverty situation through such a poverty line and to uh, review the effectiveness of uh, poverty alleviation measures. But things turn out quite the opposite. It seems that the uh, poverty rate has been on the rise since then. And uh, there's no correlation between the poverty line and poverty alleviation measures. And it's not difficult, easy to monitor the, si the evolving situation of poverty. And uh, the effectiveness of policy cannot be um, assessed and, uh, in accordance with the poverty line. We have a 1.3 seven million people in poverty. And the even after the policy intervention is still over one million. So it doesn't fully reflect the poverty situation in Hong Kong. Uh, we use uh, fifty percent of median household income as the line uh, and compared to Europe uh, we are behind. <coughs> and the stint income level hasn't reflected the actual cost situation. Now, prices have increased, especially for housing. Uh, for $4,000 uh, to be taken as the poverty alleviation line, that is not very helpful. Now, the CE in her policy in her uh, election manifesto, she said that she worked as director for three years, so she knew fully the needs of the grassroots. And the CE mentioned that she has a good grasp of the needs of social welfare, and the poverty population has kept rising. And yet, for assistance to the grassroots, there are many barriers. So it's too troublesome for the grassroots to apply. And uh, the government spends huge administrative expenses to vet the cases. And this year, the, po uh, the budget uh, has uh, almost paid nothing for poverty allevi alleviation. Now, uh, it's uh, $4.70 uh, uh, per person, and it's uh, very far from uh, the what's given to the rich. The, this morning, uh, Dr. Lord Shi Kuang said that the education expenses are very huge, uh, but the, these uh, sums don't really resolve the needs or the problems. Thank you. We hope the government uh, should s set up a uh, poverty line to help the poor that reflects the uh, actual needs. Next, Mr. Ho Chuck Hin. Now, if you uh, type in poverty alleviation on Google, you will see Dr. Lord Chi Kuang said that uh, poverty cannot be eradicated. Now, in 2017, uh, the mainland uh, said that by 2020, uh, poverty will be eradicated. Now, Dr. Law said that we uh, use relative poverty as our guide, so we cannot get rid of poverty as on the mainland. Now, I don't doubt the knowledge of Dr. Law, 
but I think he is trying to. Uh, he he thinks uh, Hong Kong people are stupid. Now uh, he said that uh, the median household income has uh, increased because of different uh, rates of increase in uh, income. Uh, now, if the government wants to uh, alleviate poverty, now your most important, object, important objective is to uh, try to let the poor people uh, catch up with the median household income. Now, in order to do that, uh, first wages have to be increased, uh, such as uh, proposed by the Alliance of Concern for Wages. We think the city minimum wage should be raised to $55, and the social welfare assistance amounts should be increased. Uh, now, given the inequality of income in Hong Kong, we are not asking for income inequality. We are just uh, asking for uh, uh, fairness. Now, uh, many people ask, uh, will welfareism uh, prevail in Hong Kong? Now, we need to let the low incomes catch up with median household income. We need to deal with the gap between the median household income and the income levels of the rich. We know that the tax base in, in Hong Kong is very narrow. Many uh, income related to capital, uh, uh, much of the income related to income is not taxed. Uh, so there should be dividend tax, uh, 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 inheritance tax, and so on. So uh, there should be uh, taking more money from, uh, or, tr or transfer of resources from the rich to the poor. Now, to realize all that, uh, it seems uh, it's very difficult for Hong Kong. Now, we don't even have an objective to alleviate poverty, much less eradicate poverty. And we don't have an adequate poverty line. Now, if you do not fully understand the concept, uh, then you are really uh, being... Uh, failing to be conscientious. So the government should set up short, medium, and long-term poverty eradication objectives. Next, the Hong Kong Society for Helping the Poor. i like to talk about the poverty line and the uh, targets for alleviating poverty. Now, since 2013, we set up the poverty line. We think that it's a step forward uh, that sets up a, an objective standard, but this is far from adequate. Now, uh, just now, a speaker said that under the current poverty line, one cannot eradicate poverty. I'd like to respond that. Now, this is actually uh, quite absurd because you have to, you only need to read the report on poverty. There are statistics on the poverty gap. So, uh, as long as you pay a certain amount of money to the poor, then uh, Hong Kong people can all uh, have incomes uh, higher than the poverty line. And the government itself says that if you input such resources, uh, the poverty, uh, the poor people uh, uh, can be eradicated, in the number will drop to zero. Now, uh, and on the current poverty line, right now it's uh, based on household income. Now, uh, that gives rise to certain questions. Now, it didn't consider that within the same household, the, the members can enjoy different uh, levels of uh, living standard. And if you uh, take into account only the income, then you don't fail to take into account the housing 
condition. Now, very often in other countries, they use other uh, measurements, uh, such as uh, 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 level of uh, deficiency. Now, so the government uh, should use the deficiency measure or indicator. Now, uh, very often, uh, academic studies are based on figures uh, supplied by the Census and Statistics Department, or uh, the uh, it's uh, sometimes is based on the uh, data for assessing the uh, grants for students. So the data is very incomplete. Now, for instance, there's nothing on the health situation of the poor. And very often, uh, tracking studies are used abroad. Uh, now, uh, so this requires the government to provide regular support for studies uh, over uh, long periods of time. So the government should set up uh, these uh, uh, studies over a long period. Now, uh, there's also there's no uh, target for uh, poverty alleviation. Now, uh, for some, the 14.7% uh, might be regarded as uh, satisfactory or not, depending on your objective. For instance, in Ireland and uh, England, they have a, a specific target uh, for reducing the poverty rate to a certain level over a certain period of time. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Li Ta Singh, uh, Alliance of uh, uh, Concern for the Low-Income Families. Now, uh, it's based on a, uh, on a median household income, so we think that's a problem. Now, uh, there are multiple poverty lines in many economies or countries, but we merely use the income as a base. Now, in, uh, it depends on the expenditure. In Hong Kong, uh, inflation is high, expenditures are high, but incomes are low. The grassroots uh, have to uh, scringe uh, to survive, so the measurement targets are restricted and there's an underestimation of poverty uh, and of the uh, uh, people uh, who are poor. Now, so without an indicator, uh, you can't really alleviate the poor. Now, uh, under CY uh the, uh, the uh, Commission on Poverty has done very little. Now, uh, now uh, they go to the subdivided units and the uh, rooftop uh, housing, and uh, and yet uh, little is achieved. The poverty situation has uh, continued to deteriorate. Now under uh, Mrs. Le uh, Carrie Lam, uh, now uh, all sorts of slogans have been uh, raised, but the Still, the objective is lacking. There is no determination. Now, the officials uh, also have children. Now, if you don't supply an objective, uh, how can you uh, t achieve uh, education of the child? Now, uh, so in business, you also need objectives, but there is none in poverty alleviation. So uh, they sing their own praises, but in fact, uh, they are just uh, uh, trying to uh, shirk their responsibility. Now, so the ruler is uh, lacking or deficient. And so over the years, the government uh, has been deficient in its poverty alleviation. So, 
It merely tries to uh, utter a prayer instead of doing something uh, concrete. Uh, uh, next, uh, Miss Lee. Uh, uh, now, now uh, let's review the poverty situation in Hong Kong. Let's look at the poverty line. Now it's uh, at uh, fifty percent of median household income. Now uh, the the uh, 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 the uh, uh, Gini coefficient is uh, uh, this is uh, very unfavorable compared with the Gini coefficient. And if you look at Google, you see Dr. Law saying it, there's no way to eradicate poverty. We think that's wrong. And uh, let's look at the annual uh, poverty report. It pointed out the deficiency of the poverty line. It said that uh, it doesn't consider the assets. Uh, so uh, the high in uh, those uh, who are asset rich uh, are included. So uh, it overestimated poverty. Now uh, Li Ka Sheng uh, doesn't pay. Uh, dividend tax. He doesn't pay tax. Now, 170,000 uh, elderly uh, of the uh, uh, elderly poor, uh, but uh, the government seems to suggest that many of them own their own housing. Now, the use of the median household income is uh, far, far uh, from being realistic. Now, we, uh, the community believes that we should look at it from the perspective of expenditure. Now, in particular, rent has increased sharply. If we only look at income but overlook expenditure, this is unrealistic. Now, even if you say the poverty, uh, the po policies uh, improve the poverty line. It's not really helpful. And uh, uh, let's look at what the government did in the past. Hello, da fei ge la With the working family allowance, uh, they have been uh, boasting about this. We have 140,000 uh, households in poverty who are not receiving CSSA. How many will be held to be lift uh, to are uh, to be lifted out of poverty? Seven thousand. CSSA uh, is the f safety net, and uh, we are talking about a second safety net, and the whole policy on uh, poverty alleviation can only lift seventy seven thousand of them out of poverty. The low income uh, subsidy was set, criticized uh, to be a rip of loopholes, and it said that uh, 250,000 households will be uh, helped through the subsidy. And then there was the ref improved uh, system. We have now have the working family assistance, and uh, now they have shifted the goalposts once, once again. And only 90,000 of them will be assisted. Let's not talk about the objective or the uh, ultimate goals. Uh, they don't even have the determination to do something about the problem. Uh, next, we have Mr. Ms. Wong Siu Kwan. Uh, we've been talking about lifting people out of poverty. We need to have more people in the work. Uh, in the workforce who are employed, who hold jobs. Then there, there's a. a Better prospect for them. Many women uh, can work. It's not that they are not capable of uh, taking up jobs, but uh, home ca many women uh, are regarded as a natural uh, home carers. Actually, many women would like to get employment, get employed. But you know, Hong in Hong Kong, working hours are long. And school 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 days uh, ends very early. So if uh, a mother works, uh, he will not be able to take care of uh, her children at the same time. So we hope the government should provide uh, extensive childcare service for school students, and there should be service for voucher to families. 
so that uh, women can uh, get a, a job uh, with a higher family income, they will not be in poverty. If the the, the husband can uh, give more to support the family, that then is good. If not, then uh, they have to spend every dollar very very carefully. And the community uh, childcare service uh, is supposed to help the, these families. And many ch child care centers require the uh, f family, the children, to be taken to the center uh, by the parents. But if the parents are wor both working, how can this be done? So we need to as expand the uh, neighborhood uh, child care service, but uh, that the system should be uh, should be based on a uh, hired uh, carers system. A person is a uh, so, like a volunteer work, and the hourly allowance is low. You must uh, provide the incentive so that more people would be willing to. Uh, to be care a uh, home, to be a neighborhood child carers, and we also should also to implement uh, family friendly policies more extensively. A person is a sort of voluntary. If it's a policy, it should be make. A, it would be make mandatory. It would be good for Hong Kong as a uh, advanced. Uh, Advanced uh, economy, uh, so we should uh, provide some uh, assistance to women as well, who want to start their own business, and who have the skills to do so. Well, many people have suggested that we should at least give the the normal hourly wages to those uh, childcare childcare workers in our um, community. Ms. Silai San, we know that uh, the poverty rate has risen. The figures are rise, all rising. The government's uh, policy is creating poverty. We know that among the the poor, the working poor is in the worst situation. You know, for the working family allowance. This is still subject to means test. It's linked to working hours, and the child allowance, uh, which is not related to working hours, uh, is actually pegged to the working hours of the applicant. So we should uh, review our policies. We have four hundred thousand or so people who are uh, on CSSA who are in poverty. Apart from elderly and the disabled. Most CSSA recipients are having income under the beneath the uh, poverty line, and uh, if they uh, rent uh, in the private market, uh, they don't. The uh, allowance itself is insufficient. We have uh, hundreds of thousands of people living in uh, substandard uh, accommodation. They pay high rent. They pay high. Uh, Tariffs for uh, utilities, and they are ignored by the government. Over the years, the financial secretary uh, has never considered any uh, cash subsidy. And after CCF has uh, cancelled its subsidy for the end nothing group, it seems that they, these people who are most uh, who are in need uh, are ignored. We have a serious problem of elderly profit in. Poverty. We have working poor and uh, two hundred thousand children in poverty. We should provide a better uh, sub subsidy to students. Well, Hong Kong is an affluent community, but these families have been uh, asking for more to be given. And uh, person, there's still big gap, and uh, they are not the. The subsidy is not sufficient to help them to uh, learn uh, or to be involved in uh, sports training or uh, or artistic development. 
So why is it that there are so many problems and we cannot address them as adequately? It's because the government has no uh, ultimate goal in poverty elimination and uh, no policies to support them. They can do whatever they want. The Commission on Poverty says they want to alleviate uh, poverty, but when the CSS aid uh, for the elderly we have had its uh, age limit from 60 raised to has raised from 60 to 65, well, those people would have immediately f uh, fall beneath the poverty line once uh, they are a thousand dollars or so is taken away from them. There should be a poverty uh, um, assessment mechanism on policies to, to see whether uh, any uh, a policy would have the uh, impact of, so that we can uh, assess the policies uh, properly and will not be creating more poverty. Well, there was an effective measures to help the end nothing group. Uh, maybe similar policies should be launched in the future. Next. Mr. Woman Kid. Oh, Miss Huang Wen Jie. I want to talk about uh, the situation of uh, families with uh, SEN children. We have conducted two surveys on the ch these uh, children from grassroots families. In the course of the survey, we have talked to government departments, uh, SWD, Education Bureau, and the uh, Labor and Welfare Bureau, but things have not improved. The SWD has, in recent ye years, improved the, su the, su the support to SEN children, for example, support for the preschool uh, uh, service, and also the support and assessments uh, for children at school. So uh, uh, these children will get some sort of support uh, some way. But when they progress to P1, at the, at the age of six, the support will come to an end. These children from grassroots families cannot afford the services offered in the community, even from those uh, those offered by NGO. It can be at eight thousand uh, or one thousand eight hundred or one thousand dollars per session for of uh, forty five minutes. It's not affordable, and we have to rely on uh, the schools. Well, we have met with the uh, under secretary uh, for a number of times. It said that the uh, uh, in inclusive education system has worked well. It's a question with. Uh, Cooperate, cooperation between schools and f families. They provide a tutorial the service on homework, but the manning ratio is 1 to 6 to 1 to 10. Just imagine children with ADHD, uh, how would they uh, be able to be uh, uh, adequately helped? And very often these students uh, would uh, cause uh, uh, complaints. Uh, they may not be able to get uh, their homework done even after uh, they have been given one or two hours of support. And there are children who have no skills or who are ad academically the falling behind. They may be may not be good at uh, academic subjects, but they may be good uh, at certain. Uh, artistic skills such as drawing, but they cannot uh, afford the to to take uh, uh, lessons ex in ex extracurricular settings. If you ask the parents uh, and ask what kind of uh, levels uh, their problems are, or the level of support that they are getting, uh, the parents will tell you. That that they are not been uh, told by the schools. Well, when you, is we should uh, conduct a survey, ask uh, all the families uh, with uh, children, sense children, to see whether they are getting adequate services, and you know the answers. And uh, you, sh 
uh, a subsidy of twelve hundred dollars should be given to uh, send students so that they can participate in uh, various homework and tutorial supports uh, services in the community. I'm sixty nine years old. Uh, I suffer from back ache. I cannot work. Fifteen. I only got fifty thousand dollars when I uh, was laid off, and uh, I've watch virtually uh, spent all the money that I got when I was uh, laid off, and uh, even uh, a prescription of uh, Chinese medicine is uh, too costly to us. Well, we 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 contributed in the past uh, to the community. And now the, we are not properly cared for. I suffer from uh, eye and uh, aches, and very often I cannot uh, get up to work. I suffer from cataract. And uh, and I while I worked uh, lived with my son, I was denied CSSA. Only my son was working in this f extended family of six. Uh, sometimes uh, he 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 has a job. Sometimes he hasn't, and he's uh, daily ra rated. I hope the government will allow me to apply for CSSA as an individual while while I live with my son. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Lau of uh, Group for of Concern for Women uh, to Work. Uh, we know that poverty has uh, deteriorated in Hong Kong. The 2017 poverty report shows that there is a new uh, high in the poor number of poor. Uh, over one million uh, live below the poverty line of that. Uh, the poor women are about 550,000, uh, that's uh, 83,000 than the poor number of poor men. Uh, so uh, women poverty is a matter of concern and uh, we need to resolve that. Uh, many women tell us they want to work, uh, to earn money, to be less poor. But they found that the family-friendly policies are inadequate. There are inadequate childcare places, so they cannot join the labor market to improve the economy. In 2017, our society uh, did a study on grassroots families' uh, views on family-friendly family -friendly policies. Now, only 30 percent of women. Uh, work full time or part time. The other are housewives. They have to take care of family members. Now, 80% of the women who do not work uh, really want to work. 90% feel that working can help improve their income uh, and it will allow them to pay for extracurricular, extracurricular activities of their children but they don't have the opportunity. Now, there is uh, flexibility in the types of work available. They cannot both work and look after the family. And the children have half-day kindergartens. There are number of holidays. The children easily get sick. Uh, so even in primary schools, they have to uh, care for the children's studies. They can't just go to work as well as look after the children. And they have difficulty uh, enrolling the children in whole day primary or primary school or kindergarten. Now, uh, in that case, they cannot get high income jobs. 60% of the women are unable to make use of community child care services. Uh, a high proportion of them feel that these services don't meet their needs. Uh, there is no uh, service to take the children to the uh, caring program, for instance. Now, 
uh, there are only uh, over 700 uh, places for uh, infants uh, or, or young children. Now, so uh, our family-friendly policies are backward compared to advanced economies. Now, we only have uh, maternity leave and paternity leave. So the government should improve on its family-friendly policies and it should increase the number of assistant, assisted uh, child care places so that uh, poor parents can go to work. Thank you. Next, Mr. Lawai Sam, Shao K1 uh, Residence Service. Now, I'd like to make two points. Now, uh, on poverty line, right now, the poverty line that doesn't take into account some of the uh, so social benefits and uh, the also the social the poor poverty situation is not fully taken into account now uh, poverty, uh, the income gap in Hong Kong is large for the those who are rich uh, the incomes increase faster uh, so the uh, median household income uh, rises, uh, and uh, so there are more people under the poverty line. So the uh, poverty line is not a poverty alleviation indicator. Now, Matthew Cheung says that the figure is mainly to remind the government that the poverty problem still exists, but the setting of the poverty line is to let the government target the needy grassroots uh, and uh, come up with appropriate policies. Now, if the poverty line is only to remind the government uh, that there is poverty, then that's inadequate and uh, it's not meaningful. Now, the public notes uh, that there's a need for a uh, line for uh, alleviation of poverty. And also, uh, for the needy elderly, the government provides uh, old age allowance and so on. Now, th these um, help the elderly to maintain basic living, but the elderly maintain many needs, uh, such as uh, high prices and uh, heavy health care burden. So this affects the quality of life. Now, many of them still have the ability to work, but the majority of them have not engaged in any economic activity. Now, even though they collect CSSA, uh, they don't really want to add to the burden of their children or to use up their savings. So they mainly engage in, say, uh, recycling of cardboards. Now, uh, I, I suggest that uh, there should be <coughs> promotion of uh, uh, services to help the elderly uh, be employed. Uh, this should provide them with better working environment. Thank you, Mr. Law. Now, uh, jobs for the elderly. Now, uh, this uh, is in the, head, in the news this morning. Uh, perhaps the Under Secretary can uh, clarify on this point, uh, the, the elderly person aged uh, 67 years old has difficulty finding jobs. Next, Mr. Leung Yat Long. Now, right now, uh, there are 1.377 million uh, elderly poor. Now, Uh, or, 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 or poor persons. Now, this has an incre this is an increase uh, of uh, over the previous year. The government says that the 
this poverty line isn't accurate enough. It doesn't fully reflect the poverty situation. Now, previously, uh, the uh, the a few years ago, the uh, poverty uh, number of poor fell below one million, and now it's slightly over one million. Uh, but the government doesn't uh, re uh, review uh, how it has been inadequate. Now, the now. Uh, 20% of the outsourced uh, contract workers uh, only get minimum wage. The minimum wage is only reviewed every two years. Uh, so there's a large number of working poor. And the uh, 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 old age allowance, uh, 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 the enhanced old age allowance, uh, the income limit has been raised. Uh, so uh, it, the policies uh, don't really help the elderly or, or those who are in the grassroots. For instance, take CSSA. Right now, the government claims that it will encourage CSSA recipients to go to work. So there is a, uh, a uh, non-means uh, tested mechanism. Uh, but uh, it's uh, very uh, stringent. Right now, it says that uh, the wages earned each year will not be deducted from uh, the uh, CSSA, but the upper limit is very low. Uh, now, uh, the highest uh, ex uh, amount exempted uh, is far from adequate. Now, so if a CSSA recipient uh, wants to work uh, now. Uh, at most, they can uh, have uh, twenty five hundred dollars more. Now, the government keeps saying that it wants to help the CSSA recipients to work, but <coughs> when they earn income, the amount will be deducted from their CSSA amounts. Now, so. In poverty alleviation policies, we do not have an adequate uh, poverty alleviation target. There are too many new immigrants. Each year, there are over 40,000 uh, people who come to Hong Kong on a uh, single uh, trip, uh, single uh, visa permits. Uh, Mr. Lau, you have to. And soon, now if we keep having uh, poor immigrants, we can't have an effective uh, poverty uh, alleviation target. We have to uh, review our immigration policy. Next, uh, uh, next, Mr. Lai. Now, in the 2017 policy analysis, uh, we see that 1.377 million people are poor and the number has kept increasing. The government keeps saying that uh, after policy intervention, a uh, number of people have left the poverty line. Uh, now, without the uh, policy intervention, uh, the number has kept increasing. Uh, now, this shows that there are more and more poor. Now, uh, we are a group of healthcare uh, workers. Uh, now, we think that Hong Kong hasn't provided a healthy environment, and there's no policy uh, for these people to uh, be rid of poverty. Now, it has been proven that health and population are closely related. Some local studies have made clear that for low-income people, their uh, mental and physical health are affected by their income, and they, uh, especially by the living environment. For instance, the housing environment, the impact from neighbors, uh, uh, that also uh, affects their health. 
Now our group uh, also engaged in a study in 2017 on uh, working fam uh, work on the working poor. Now they are 40 percent more likely uh, than the average. Uh, person to suffer from <coughs> uh, cardiovascular problems, 40% uh, are likely to obese, 60% are likely to suffer from <coughs> uh, chronic uh, uh, aches and uh, wounds, and uh, uh, very often when they go to work they are tired, and when they seek leave uh, they will uh, suffer from uh, lack of income. So <clears throat> we should uh, set up a poverty indicator based on health. So in our proposal, now I see the Assistant uh, Census and Statistics Commissioner being here. Uh, now I think, hope there should be a study uh, on uh, the health care uh, expenditure uh, of the poor. Now, uh, the health care expenditure is just 4% of the income. Uh, now, actually, this doesn't take into account the other losses uh, uh, because uh, when they go to see the doctor, they cannot go to work, then they uh, lose economically. So uh, the officials uh, should take these factors into account. Thank you, Mr. Lai. Ms. Matelli. Work, I want to focus on five specific issues faced by Hong Kong's poorest ethnic minorities. Number one, ethnic minority families with special education needs children. The majority of them live in poverty and have little knowledge on how to handle their children. They are faced with the double whammy of language barriers plus special needs. In addition, those with severe special needs have very little access to education because all public special schools in Hong Kong operate in CMI. The only EMI special school is a private school, which is unaffordable to the poor. Parents cannot communicate with the schools and therefore children cannot improve. Number two, EM women. We have a helpline for South Asian women. Many of the women can't read or write any language. When we ask them where they live, they can't answer that basic question. We urge the government to form special outreach teams made up of EM um, female social workers who speak the language to outreach to this vulnerable group. Three, girls' education. We recently released a report called Dreams of Pakistani Children. The Pakistani children population is the fastest growing population in the whole of Hong Kong. After speaking to Pakistani girls, we, we learned that the children are discouraged from studying after the age of 14. The typical age for a girl to get engaged to be married is 14 to 15. Education beyond 14, Form 4 or Form 5 is typically constrained. What is the most surprising about these girls is they envision themselves living a life of poverty in 10 years' time. This is the cycle. They get married young, then unable to complete their education, can't find a job, and then the poverty continues. The key to ending poverty is to educate a girl child. This is what we learn from economists around the world. We need to educate a girl child in Hong Kong. Number four, pre-kindergarten children. We conducted a piece of research looking at kindergartens in Hong Kong, and the principals were very honest with us that they, they prefer not to have EM children in their kindergartens. This is because they don't speak Chinese. Teachers are frustrated. What we're asking for is the government to encourage kindergartens to look at this issue seriously because if children end up in EMI schools, the chances of them learning Chinese is constrained. Number five, EM youth. Last year, we researched 250 EM youth. These youth call Hong Kong home, but almost half of them want to leave Hong Kong. 
because of language barriers, but also because of discrimination. Now, we spend a lot of time at the government talking about how to improve the EM population, but we also need to talk about how to improve social inclusion with the majority of population of Hong Kong. We need to enhance a public awareness to the public about ending racial discrimination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She mentions five issues which we all pay attention to. As uh, SEN children among EM, women among EM, Pakistani children and kindergartens, and inclusion. Well, this is not the first time we've heard the, these things, but we have been paying attention to these issues. And, uh, well, we know the speaking time is short. Mr. Ng Chung from Sun Ching the Rights Association. I grew up in a single uh, parent family. I live with my family in some in uh, Yamate on a rooftop uh, housing. I'm now uh, studying in a under a self finance uh, degree program of the uh, University of Education. The poverty rate is uh, seventeen percent. I think uh, insufficient support has been provided to the young people in edu in tertiary education. Well, we have been uh, offering fifteen thousand uh, uh, publicly funded uh, first degree programs uh, to our young population. So that is to say, five twenty five percent of the cohort each year. And many uh, young people cannot uh, gain admission, although they are qualified, and some of them have to be enrolled on uh, self-finance uh, degree programs. Since it's uh, self-financing in nature, uh, these tuition fees are very high, and uh, these uh, undergraduates will have to borrow uh, money from the government. Uh, they take out a student loan, and they have to repay this is a very heavy debt to, to to young graduates. And because of the lack in means, uh, they seldom have the opportunity to be involved in exchange programs. Uh, I, for, for example, I, w I, I would like to uh, upgrade my the English language proficiency, and uh, there are exchange programs in, in uh, English speaking. Uh, countries uh, and uh, universities uh, well it would uh, cost me 30 to 40 thousand dollars but my family income is just uh, something like uh, 110 thousand uh, per annum so I hope the government can offer more assistance to the young people uh, in from poor families uh, in meeting expenses of the tuition fees and uh, exchange uh, and internship uh, courses. I hope uh, there could be a living allowance uh, for the students uh, in tertiary education and uh, the CSSA allowance uh, will not be uh, stopped. And the government should uh, Promote uh, lifelong planning and uh, provide multiple pathways for the career advancement and give them more opportunities. Mr. Chang, the, in 2016, the Commission on Poverty issued a report on EMs. It said that uh, South Asians usually uh, hold uh, low income jobs. We are talking about Nepalese, uh, uh, Pakistani, India, and uh, Thais. Uh, they account for 30 percent of people in poverty, and 64.7 percent uh, belong to the category of uh, working poor. Employment is the key to the poverty alleviation because uh, they can uh, have uh, upward mobility. It's an ideal picture. That they pay, but if you talk to EMs, they will tell you that uh, it's very difficult to get the first job. In 
now let alone the job that has a future and a career path. Because of language barrier, the options are limited to them. When we talk to employers, many a time that they do not want to hire EMs, not because they discriminate against them, but that they don't have much experience in managing these employees, and therefore they are they are reluctant to make the first move. And very often uh, they would give priority to uh, ch Chinese uh, people, and uh, and uh, the government should encourage employers to hire EMs. Uh, very, uh, but it's very unfortunate that uh, uh, if we look at uh, MTLC, uh, which uh, is a majority owned by the government. If we look at the website of MTLC, they have an apprentice uh, system, but uh, the website uh, only provides information in Chinese, and they also require a pass in uh, in DSC Chinese subject. Many EMs can only uh, pass the GCSE Chinese uh, language equivalent, and so they are uh, excluded. They are not. Uh, Accepted. I, I, well, we understand that uh, for some jobs, uh, Chinese is a prerequisite. But for DSC, uh, Chinese subject, uh, they, the uh, curriculum it covers uh, classical Chinese, uh, which is difficult to EMs. Therefore, I think the government and, uh, for example, the MTLC, uh, as, a, as a big corporation, should en employ more EMs. And employers in the private sector need uh, some assist assistance from the government in hiring the translation translation services, etc., before they can uh, employ EMs, uh, SMEs, uh, and the employers uh, cannot afford to do that, do that on their own. Yeah, we need to pay attention to the uh, problem faced by the ethnic minorities. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, many are affected by the poverty in Hong Kong, as evident by the wealth gap being highest in the last 45 years, and minority groups suffer from it exponentially. Today, I would like to raise um, our concern over poverty situation of South Asian ethnic minorities in Hong Kong. According to the government's latest poverty reports, poverty rate of South Asian ethnic minorities is around 26% higher than all EMs in general, and much higher than the whole population. One may wonder why the situation of South Asian ethnic minority is much worse than the overall poverty situation. As poverty issue is multidimensional and has to be analyzed and addressed from different aspects, one of which relates to welfare and social services available for underprivileged. Strengthening social welfare policies is one direction, but South Asian ethnic minorities even encounter difficulties in, access, in accessing to existing public and social services. It can be seen after so-called policy intervention, the reduction of poverty rate of South Asian ethnic minority is around 10%, which is two and a half uh, times lower than the whole population. A study on ethnic minorities' awareness and satisfaction towards selected public services was released last year that shows that there's lack of provision of interpretation services and culture sensitivity among frontline staff of social welfare department. Unequal accessibility is not uncommon when it comes to other essential public services, especially those services that fall under the poverty alleviating measures, such as student finance assistance, public rental housing, working family allowance, and so on. In order to alleviate poverty situation, government must ensure that EMs have equal access to public services. All government departments should have performance indicators and performance pledges in order to and provide services to ethnic minorities, especially with, re with regards to provision of interpretation services. Service delivery should be EM friendly, such as enough support should be provided in filling up complicated application forms and going through difficult application procedures. Information of poverty alleviation measures should not only be translated into EM languages and placed in the shelves of the government department, 
but also should be reached to ethnic minority communities. Staff from the EM backgrounds should be employed in order to reach EM community and bridge them to essential public services, particularly for the services that alleviate poverty among the ethnic minority community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the deputations and individuals have all spoken in, in this session. Let's see if we got anything from uh, the f Bureau now. Under Secretary, now this is the third session of the day. A uh, mention has been made about uh, women and uh, poverty of EMs. Let me say something first about ethnic minorities. In the previous sessions, a number of speakers have told us the, the difficulties that they have been facing, and we know that the poverty of uh, EMs can be uh, illustrated by some figures. For example, their family size tends to be bigger, and uh, the, the, the jobs they hold tend to be uh, Lower, low, low skilled. As a result, uh, income uh, is comparatively lower. Uh, we are going to strengthen our work in this regard uh, on a number of fronts. And uh, for example, the proposed uh, outreach service to bring the message to the uh, clients on how to apply for welfare and support services and uh, what and how we can uh, enhance the employment services the labor department is going to involve some ngo uh, to run pilot schemes to better uh, serve the em community one of the ways to encourage employment and uh, and to achieve the uh, aim of uh, Poverty alleviation would be to uh, engage some NGOs to offer contact services so that they know how to apply for assistance. So far, the, uh, we have uh, managed to the, assist the 1,200 of them to apply for uh, the subsidies and allowance that they are eligible. And education is uh, important, and we're not just talking about children uh, here. Uh, we also need to educate the education so that they know the importance of uh, education for the children. And also, we like to look at uh, the uh, job types, which uh, we should um, offer. To a great extent, to EM such as uh, civil service jobs. When I talked to some ethnic minorities, I was told that uh, some uh, young women, young EM women, are doing the uh, are acting as a uh, are working as uh, teaching assistants in schools, and we should encourage uh, more of them to uh, go for that uh, career that objective. Now we try to help uh, the poor uh, to earn their own upkeep. Now some uh, women have to look after their family members, so that's the difficulty. So we have to enhance the childcare services or services for the elderly and on family friendly policies. Now we see that at even at different age groups, uh, those who uh, work part time have increased sharply in number. Uh, they are now uh, over 200,000. Now flexible hours of work enable them to look after the family members. Now for men. Uh, they also need to play a more important role in the families in looking after the children. Uh, I will leave more time for uh, members to ask questions and then I will uh, supplement. Uh, Dr. Fernando Chung first, four minutes. I thank the uh, deputations and individuals for coming to this hearing. 
Now, especially when we talk about uh, poverty eradication as an objective. Now, in the previous segments, uh, Dr. Lo Chi Kuang was here, but I didn't hear any specific proposals, uh, not to mention uh, uh, eradicating poverty. Now, the CE says uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, she has uh, uh, visions about uh, the uh, artificial island to create more land, etc. But we have uh, a serious poverty problem. Uh, one out of five persons is poor. Now, even after policy intervention, nearly 15% of the population live in poverty. Now, many groups, including the elderly, the handicapped, and ethnic minorities, uh, as uh, highlighted in this segment, uh, women, new arrivals, and even young people, they all face uh, poverty situations. I'd like to ask the administration, in this regard, does it have any vision? You keep uh, doing a lot of things, but the effects are not very visible. Now, concerning the poverty rates of those groups that I mentioned, has there been much improvement? And there's been little improvement in the overall uh, poverty rate. Now is the third segment of this hearing. Now, will you draw up specific targets? Or failing that, can you learn from uh, the uh, UK and uh, other former Commonwealth countries? Now, any views or visions, uh, Under Secretary? Now, first on the poverty line, uh, now, this is a framework for analysis. Now, we see the need to be more focused, for instance, on the elderly. Now, taking the elderly as an example, uh, now, uh, we uh, have uh, enhanced the old age uh, allowance, uh, the old age living allowance. Now, we help the uh, those who are able to work uh, to become employed and so uh, leave uh, the poverty line. And uh, the women's difficulty is that they have to look after family members. So we provide support services like uh, child care and daytime care for the elderly. And on the labor side, uh, we encourage the employers to uh, be family friendly. Now, uh, this is a good opportunity because uh, it's hard to hire uh, staff these days. And also, uh, the working family allowance, we have uh, enhanced its contents. So, we have tried to uh, deepen and uh, enhance the uh, poli various policies. Now, the government says that employment is a strategy for uh, eradicating or alleviating poverty. But for the groups mentioned, I asked the government how many ethnic minorities they have hired. They cannot say. And as for the handicapped, now actually, uh, those uh, when they were uh, those who were hired eventually became handicapped, uh, but not initially when they were hired. And for the other disadvantaged groups, how can we help them uh, have more employment opportunities, and uh, for them not to remain the working poor? after being employed. And the WFA uh, has been uh, less uh, effective than expected. Now, it's uh, uh, 
you expected 200,000 families to benefit, but less than half actually uh, benefited. Now, the Commission on Poverty, uh, they don't really get the message, so they cannot offer good advice to the administration. Now, uh, we hear uh, the views of all uh, we uh, uh, sit on the uh, Commission on Poverty, so we believe the COP will take into account the views expressed. Next, uh, Xu Ka Chen, Vice Chairman. Now, I am not going to ask a question. I just like to uh, sort out a fallacy. Now, uh, this fallacy frequently occurs. Now, uh, so we want to correct that. Now, this is relative poverty as a concept. Now, relative poverty. It's not like a, now this doesn't uh, delineate what is poverty. Now, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the undersecretary earns less than the secretary. Now, uh, relative poverty was a term proposed by Peter Thompson. And, a scholar who wrote the book International Analysis of Poverty. Now, this is the classic work on poverty. Now, poverty means a deficiency in living standard compared to the rest of society, not just a deficiency in financial resources, but also that uh, as a result, they cannot engage in daily life like the others. They're not living the life uh, or at the quality of life of the others. No. This doesn't mean that poverty is relative. If poverty is relative, then the one doesn't have to resolve it. It cannot be resolved. Uh, you cannot expect the rich to help the poor, if that's the case. Now, the Secretary said in 2019-20, uh, uh, the uh, measures will uh, improve the poverty situation. Now, I'm not that optimistic. Now, the poverty line is based on income. Most of the government's resources are spent on social welfare, and uh, education, it will not improve on the income of the poor. The government has only set up one poverty line. It's of reference value. Uh, it's based on 50% of median household income. There are many constraints. The government keeps saying that the constraints of the poverty line well, how to deal with these constraints? It's not that we remove this poverty line, but maybe we should have different poverty indicators so that we can three-dimensionally uh, determine how the poor are living. Perhaps the undersecretary, you can tell us whether the government intends to set up other poverty indicators, uh, such as uh, basic uh, living uh, s surveys or basic deficiency indicators. The Undersecretary. On input of resources, I will not repeat myself now, but uh, I explain that the poverty line is to provide a framework to understand the poverty situation in Hong Kong. But I'd like to reiterate that in our enhancements of policies and in our new policies, we don't just work under the poverty line. We don't just uh, 
work for those who are under the poverty line. We uh, spend a lot of money to improve the poverty situation in various ways. So the uh, collection of more data will help us understand the difficulties faced by various groups. A lot of this cannot be quantified. Now, the advantage of this public hearing is that we hear many real-life stories. And uh, perhaps in our policies, uh, we can improve the culture. Uh, it's not just uh, by money. Now, members asked, Well, if we have more data, it will certainly help us uh, improve in our policies in the future. Dr. Fernando Cheung in the second round. I have a short question. Now, uh, this is a follow-up question. Now, the Undersecretary doesn't seem to be providing us with any surprise today. Now, some uh, questions uh, have been quite specific. Now, how about children's dental services? Uh, and on children poverty, has the government studied that? And what help are you going to provide? I will uh, refer to the matter to the Food and Health Bureau. Now, we have a shortage of dentists right now, and uh, some speakers have mentioned that child decay among grassroots children is a serious problem. Of course, this has to be dealt with at an early age. Now, uh, well, many matters, uh, even though they might fall within the ambit of the LWB, uh, we will uh, take them uh, back to the department's concern. Now, today we are focusing, of course, on poverty, uh, on absolute poverty and relative poverty. Are there ways so that uh, uh, we can further improve? 1.01 uh, 1 .01 million uh, poor is not, uh, not a figure to be proud of uh, after policy intervention. Now, uh, we don't want uh, to be intergenerational poverty. Now, uh, assistance for the children are very lacking. Uh, now, we uh, allowances for the poor children. Can you study that, uh, for instance, concerning dental services? It's not just a matter of money, as the chairman said. Uh, is on about deployment of manpower and other policies issue. I will uh, reflect those views to the relevant committees. Uh, so, uh, well, if we can uh, pay for the service, uh, we can certainly get something, some dental service for ch children in poverty. Well, we have to consider the question of uh, service uh, venues and uh, manpower. Well, we have been doing as much as we can. For example, in terms of uh, in the provision of childcare, we have special uh, clauses in the uh, land sale uh, and land grant, and also we have earmarked twenty billion dollars to buy services, and that's uh, in respect of uh, child uh, child care. So in some other aspects, in some others, in relation to some other services, sometimes we don't have the uh, the uh, venue or the money. Well, yes, it takes uh, the venue, the uh, service venue, and uh, the money, as well as the commitment on the part of the government to make things happen. All right, uh, you 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 blame the lack of uh, venue. You have a lot of money, but you don't have the uh, space, the premises. Well, this is an excuse. We have just approved a new cust uh, immigration department headquarters, which would uh, include a uh, firing range uh, for their training, uh, which is more than 
10,000 square meters. That's in uh, Chengguanlou. We asked that, uh, can we have a childcare center instead of the firing range? The answer is no. So rather use the land uh, for purposes you think uh, are good, or you sell the land for the development of uh, luxury housing, and your government departments have uh, different needs. And when we want you to provide more uh, for f services, where well, you you blame the lack of land, but you have a uh, brown few sites used as uh, container yards, and you won't resume the land. There's nothing we can uh, nudge the government into action uh, since we are not having a political accountability system here. Two deputations, Supan Foundation, and another one, uh, Health Action, have uh, mentioned something which are not often uh, raised. I have a question uh, for Health uh, Action. There are people who are in poverty who are relatively not as healthy. Uh, they may have to use uh, our healthcare services to a greater extent. It has to do with poverty. If uh, well, we should promote primary health care more the ambitiously instead of at a snail's pace. We want to have a primary health care in all the 18 districts and now it's just got only a few. And also the, when it comes to SEN children or the women or girls from uh, poor families, if, they are, if this disadvantage is uh, coupled with uh, the, the another advantage of uh, ethnic minority status, then it's the, uh, even uh, more difficult uh, poverty trap for them. Has the government looked into this through any studies? Do you have any strategy to uh, address the issues? Well, I think uh, th for the minorities, what we want to see is to help them to uh, address the poverty uh, questions uh, su such as women who have to take care of the families as home carers we we would like to provide more support to them we would uh, do this in a focused manner uh, we have a number of uh, committees uh, uh, chaired by uh, CS we have uh, different committees and commissions uh, looking into the welfare of uh, children, etc. Uh, we would uh, continue to strive for improvements. I don't see, uh, I don't find any reason. The only key words are uh, to continue to strengthen something, uh, which we often find in government uh, documents. We have been uh, going in that direction for years, but not much has been achieved. Even for the uh, for the elderly population, which is said to have attracted uh, the highest investment, well, the um, achievements in poverty alleviation uh, is only minimal. Would you be willing to review the policies? and really change tag so that we can get something better. I hope uh, we can get a more comprehensive review after the fourth session is done. All right, I don't think there's a need for further response from the uh, Under Secretary. Mr. Siu Ka Chun, I've been inspired by the uh, dialogue between uh, Dr. 
Fernando Chong and the Under Secretary, uh, either they bring the, the lack of land or the lack of manpower or la the lack of uh, funding. So I, uh, they will always have uh, something uh, missing in the uh, in the equation. So they are putting up excuses. I know. Oh, if you uh, call the police as if uh, call the government as if it's a person, I would say uh, it, the name of the government is uh, excuse, Mr. Excuse. They have many excuses. I don't want to go round and round in circle. So I have a direct question. Uh, there was a question raised by one of the deputations health action, and that is uh, when the census and statistics uh, department collect the, the statistics uh, or or conduct a population census. Can we ask more focused questions? We have an assistant commissioner of uh, census and statistics uh, attending today's meeting. Please tell us whether the uh, suggestion from the uh, deputation is uh, feasible or not. If not, why not? Please switch on the mic for the uh, commissioner. There's a suggestion that uh, that we should collect more statistics on the health uh, conditions of our population. Uh, uh, coming up, we are going to have uh, a survey on the disabled and uh, and a health related survey at the same time we're going to conduct analysis uh, into the uh, poverty situation of these people why can't you be more positive in your response there will be our pp on uh, the disabled well the subject should be the uh, health of uh, people in poverty. Are you going to cover this in your survey? In the coming surveys, we'll try to find out who are the disabled, who are suffering from uh, chronic diseases. We will then uh, conduct a social analysis and also look into the the poverty situation of uh, these uh, groups of people vis-a-vis -vis the general population. We we'll look at the group of uh, we we'll understand uh, the poverty situation of uh, the chronically ill better after the service. We're talking about PP and the disabled. Of course, among the disabled, there are poor people in poverty, but it doesn't mean that all people. All disabled people are in uh, poverty. Do you have a survey that will cover this uh, particular subject? The health condition of those in in poverty, not just uh, the disabled. Well, first of all, let's uh, look at the uh, the uh, assertion that uh, not all disabled people are in poverty. Of course, uh, we have got some government data already. Collected, we may not need to rely a survey. For example, the, uh, we may have uh, got the data of uh, disabled uh, or, or students suffering from some uh, disabilities. Of course, uh, the the uh, the uh, issues are related. Well, if you are able body, of course, uh, you are more capable of uh, ho holding jobs, and therefore your income may be higher. But uh, is uh, disability mean does disability means that uh, poverty is a foregone conclusion? Well, we have to look at uh, the uh, actual situation to uh, through such surveys. And I believe uh, in due course, uh, this council will ask for an update. And I believe uh, we'll be, when we're ready, we'll come back to share with you what we've found. Thank you. So that's the end of the third session. And uh, uh, we'll start the fourth session at uh, 3.50 p.m. I thank all the individuals and deputations 
for coming to share with us your views today.